Entrando em contato com atendimento ao cliente. Para muitas pessoas é um jeito fácil de arruinar um bom dia. Mas na Zendesk, nós deixamos a experiência do cliente melhor. Melhor para sua avó, melhor para o seu vendedor preferido de flores, melhor para o cara do apartamento 3A, melhor para você, melhor para todos. Porque enquanto alguns dizem que o cliente sempre tem razão, nós dizemos que o cliente é sempre humano. E como seres humanos, queremos fazer algo melhor para todos nós. Zendesk, experiência do cliente com IA desenvolvida para humanos. It never occurred to me most of the time when I was the only woman in the room that, oh, geez, I'm the only woman in the room, right? I have had, held very high level positions and we have uh, hired the best people for all the positions here at FranFun. And coincidentally, 75% of those people happen to be female. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to the latest edition of Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach and your podcast host. Um, March is Women's History Month. And with that in mind, we are going to spotlight some female pioneers, some innovators, some of the next generation of superstar women in the world of franchising. And boy, do we have a great one for you today. But before we get to this amazing person, um, quick reminder of who we are. Fran Coach is a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals like yourself interested in owning a franchise. We are partnered with well over 600 of the top franchisors in the country, spanning nearly 70 industries. Our number one goal, as always, is to help properly educate you on all aspects of franchise ownership and then help you find what is your absolute best franchise to own. That's a little bit about us. Now let's get to our guest. All right, so that's a bit about us. Now joining us today, I am super excited because we have uh, not just one of the best female leaders in franchising, but just one of the best leaders in general and just best human beings in, in, in general. And so she is the president of Fran Fund, which is the capital letters, T-H-E, the premier franchise funding company. Um, join us. Please welcome Sherry Sieber. Sherry, thanks for being here today. Wow, Tim, that introduction um, is second to none. Thank you for the accolades of both myself and my company. It is. Well, they're, 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 they're kind of one and the same because it's not going to be a great company without a great leader. Um, and let's be honest, you and I have been in franchising a while. We can point to some franchises. <laughs> that uh, is not the case two. and not. Yes. And not. Um, so, no, always, always a pleasure talking to you and, and always been great working, working with your team over over these years. So, um, so much. and want to kind of I've got a bunch of things I want to chat with you about today. Certainly want to give you a chance to pitch Fran Fund a little bit. Tell us more about that. Um, but to start off with, I think, as you well know, franchising is really about the people. And so I like hearing stories. So tell us a little bit about how you even got into franchising back at, back at the beginning of this. I think, as with many people, you might be mildly fascinated by my entree into the franchise world. I pretty much married it. <laughs> my, my, uh, although I wasn't, you know, been married 40 plus years and uh, my husband has been in franchising literally his entire career. He's owned franchises. He's worked for franchisors, he, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I was uh, he was the co-founder of a broker network uh, a few years ago, and I would attend meetings with him. Um, just as a spouse. So I learned, I got to know a lot of people during that time and a lot about the industry. But during that time, I had my own career. Um, I started out at Motorola and the operations side. I ran factories, I ran supply chains, I, you know, visited customers and ran factories in seven different countries. And then I got recruited by a contract manufacturer when that became very popular. And that's when I left the operation side, went to the sales side, and that expanded my reach even further around the world. And so in my travels, I've been to 26 different countries. Um, I've had people reporting to me from many different continents. And uh, at the age of 50, um, I decided that the jet lag was not 
worth the money. <laughs> so <laughs> I came home one day and told Jeff I was retiring. And that lasted about three whole months because I found out pretty quickly that I am not a very good um, lady who lunches. In other words, I'm not a good charity volunteer or anything like that. I'm too bossy for them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so about that same time uh, or you know, close to that same time, Jeff um, had started with Fran Fund and the idea of Fran Fund was to put multiple funding solutions under one roof. And trying to get that off the ground and get people to actually send us candidates, um, he said, well, since you're home doing nothing, uh, you know some of these people, <laughs> why don't you start giving them a call? And that was in 2008. And, uh, you know, a few phone calls a day turned into 24-7 pretty quickly. <laughs> and here we are, How that's math involved, but that's uh, 16 years Yes. 16 years. That is 16 years. Don't, don't, don't call me on that. So, um, and so super cool. So a couple things, number one, you and your husband both being in franchising, there's no way a married couple can survive in franchising together. So you and I both, both well know that, um, it takes yes. one spouse that's awesome, which would be us. And then our, our spouses that are just, they're kind of along on our coattails. So, um, mine won't watch this, so I know I can get away with saying that without without any repercussions. So I, I actually think you're you're safe because there's no really <laughs> denying that. And uh, a couple of couple of big comments I want to make is first, both he and I are competitive people, and so let's say 25 years ago, I could have never worked with him side by side or any other way, um, but. Age tends to mellow the drama, and uh, I think that uh, anything with more than one head is a freak. So even though we <laughs> operate uh, pretty equally here, um, that's done by specific roles and responsibilities and not overlapping, and one person's office being at least 100 feet away from the other person's office. And But back to the uh, more than one head being a freak, you know, somebody has got to be the ultimate, ultimate decider. So as much as I hate to admit it, that is not me, but <laughs> I don't often need his opinion. So, uh, it works out great. Perfect. I love it. Um, yeah, if nothing else, try different States that that works really well. Sometimes <laughs> yeah, too, you're, doing so. that. you're doing a great <laughs> job at that. Um, so tell us a little bit about, so Fran, Fran I want to, this is obviously really a focus on, on kind of the women's history month and amazing leaders and franchising, but let's not gloss over Fran fund. Um, I always say in franchising, we ain't too bright. So we usually make the name of what it is pretty obvious. So I'm going to guess Fran short for franchising fund short for funding, um, but tell us a little bit about Fran Fund, the different services and 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 why you guys are constantly like, you know, entrepreneur top, entrepreneur top, entrepreneur top, like you ran out of space on the Love on it. like on the Love website. It. So tell us a little bit about Fran Fund. Never tired of being at the top. Fran Fund really was the first company to uh, put the idea of multiple funding solutions under one roof. And of course, our competition very quickly followed because it's a good idea. And by multiple funding solutions, what I mean is prior to Fran Fund, you wanted an SBA loan, you had to go and find a bank that was willing to do that. And that same bank would not be able to talk to you about the rollover for business startup process where you're able to um, invest qualified retirement funds into your own business. And so that was really the genesis. And that allowed us and the candidate to get farther along and be more comfortable in their investigation by sort of understanding what their options were. So we today, we started then and we still do today, um, we'll talk to candidates about products that we don't actually do. So we do actually do SBA uh, packaging and consulting, and that includes uh, the first level of underwriting. So when we send a, a package to a lender, they pretty much drop anything else they're working on that's not complete and start working on a Fran Fund package because, you know, the, all the hard parts are done, right? right. Um, and then, but if the person can't do a SBA loan, 
or the rollover doesn't completely cover what they're trying to do or they can't do it, we'll talk to them about an unsecured line of credit, which that product has improved over the years. Um, we we don't do that in-house, but we have a partner that we don't mind referring, and that's saying something big, right? Um, you can't always depend on your partner's carrying on your own philosophy, but we've got an unsecured lender that does a good job there. We talk to people about how to possibly use their home equity line of credit um, and when not to use it. You know, for example, we would advise somebody who does have the ability to get an SBA loan or do a rollover or both that has home equity. And lots of times they'll say, but I've got this low interest home equity loan. We'll talk to them about that being a great rainy day fund. <laughs> um, we'll talk about if it's appropriate and and equipment leasing was a big thing a few years ago. It's not as easily, uh, it's not as, um, uh, how should we say, cost appropriate anymore, it, unless it's a specific brand that has a specific equipment package, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, all the different ways that are possible, uh, we talk about with the candidates. And so that allows them to take their eye off of how they're going to pay for it and focus back on identifying which brand fits their lifestyle, financial, et cetera, goals and working with the consultant. Awesome. No, I love it. And I think the, I like how you said that is, is because I think it's probably why, why, you know, we've, we've worked together for so long is, is that I think this should be about, all about education because this is stuff that it's, it's scary People don't know how to find the best franchise and then they can get excited about it. But how in the heck am I going to make that happen? And your team does such a good job of just educating them and consulting them and not trying to like push, 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 push. It's really that consultative. Let's educate you, help you determine what's the best. If it's the ROBS, if it's the SBA, then you're, you're, you're doing basically all of the legwork for them and really being that kind of kind of advisor and con con like consultant for them along the way, which is amazing. We do not need to sell because if you can't, first of all, you can't sell money to somebody that's not planning on buying anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> so right. there's that. And then, you know, it's just like going to a car showroom. This is an oft used you know, antidote, but you don't, you need to know when you go into a car showroom, whether you're going to be buying that one that's on the uh, revolving platform with all a hundred thousand lights on it, or if you're in the back lot looking for, you know, two or three times owned cars. Right. Right. And so fear is, as you well know, a major part of the finding the right franchise process. And so you should be spending, you, you should get the, how am I going to pay for it out of the way and focus on doing the due diligence and figuring out which franchises are the best matches. And then we stay in touch with the candidate as they're going through the process to make sure, A, they don't take a left turn and go from one brand to another that has a completely different total project cost or whatever. Um, and then uh, we work with them to, hey, when do you plan on being open? When are you planning on signing your agreement? We need to back up from that. And that's when we need to start your funding process. So we try and align so that there's a perfect uh, storm, so to speak, of when everything comes together. Yeah. And when it's done properly, I think just in franchising, it should always get to the end and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, this is it. You shouldn't feel sold pressure that you're buying confused it really should just be it's the it's absolutely this franchise it's absolutely this funding option and so okay. again like I, I love that and i know your team does such a good job of it um tell me a little bit about kind of your your journey in franchising um and and even certainly certainly but certainly before that's really professional when you knock something off as you're talking with your hands um so um who were, I guess, maybe some of the challenges for you rising up in franchising or even pre-franchising, uh, some of the challenges as, as a woman, um, certainly in franchising tends to be a little male dominated. Um, and how did you, how were you able to overcome them? That's a fun um, tale to tell. Uh, first of all, from the very beginning of my career, um, I was in male dominated industries and for some reason, I my personality um, is perhaps unusual in that 
it never occurred to me most of the time when I was the only woman in the room that, oh, geez, I'm the only woman in the room, right? Uh, and so I um, I have had, held very high level positions and, you know, my husband's man enough to have accompanied me on various, like uh, my last company had a CEO conference. And so that was the top people in the country. He was one of two trailing spouses out of a um, hundred people. So, you know, yeah. he's... He, and so we have uh, hired the best people for all the positions here at Fran Fund. And coincidentally, um, 75% of those people happen to be female. We did not seek females on purpose. Again, we hired the best people for the job. And we have a an extremely powerful team. One of the things I have always preached is, you know, as you're on your way up, you should, you know, you're pushing the people ahead of you and you're pulling the people behind you. Right. Like you're, you're pulling everybody up. I have, I love mentoring other women, even other men, if it's, if it's necessary, but you know, there are certain ways to show and demonstrate leadership and to get the respect that leaders need. And a lot of that starts with the person. It doesn't start with externally. It, it starts internally. And so that was my point earlier of saying, I just had that, you know, confidence, I guess. Uh, my mom gave me some advice a few years ago, many years ago, actually. Um, she says, Sherry, you're no better than anybody else, but nobody else is better than you. So you can do whatever you want. And even though that is so simple, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's brilliant advice. It's yeah. absolutely brilliant. So as a result, I have been fearless to approach anybody, anywhere. And uh, I actually love people, too. So that helps. Um, and then the philosophy behind Fran Fund is, you know, one of our main tenements is communication solves all problems, really. If you I like proactive communication. I like to be on offense, not defense. I like to make sure that our candidates, even after they've engaged and going through the loan process, we'll call them just to say, hey, we don't really have anything new to tell you, but everything's going fine. Right. And you you just hear this sigh of relief in people's right. voices because, you know, so I like relationships. I like uh, both referral sources and candidates to... If, possible to be buddies, um, all working towards the same goal of, of helping people change their lives with franchise ownership. And that's been a lot of fun for me. Hey, everyone. I want to take a moment to spotlight one of our premier franchise partners, Arcadec. Arcadec is the world's largest designer of all the cool things in your backyard, custom decks, porches, screen porches, outdoor fireplaces, outdoor kitchens, pergolas, gazebos, you name it. If it's something cool and amazing in the backyard, Architect can do it for you. Sounds amazing, but guess what? As an owner, you don't need any design or construction experience. You need to be a people person. You need to be able to connect with your customers, uh, your contractors that are doing the work and in the community to build those relationships, to be that go-to person for all of the incredible things you're gonna build in people's backyard. You don't need an office, you don't need stuff. You just need yourself, uh, eventually maybe a small little staff to build off of that. And as part of the Empower Brand uh, group of franchises, you're gonna have fantastic marketing support, all of the design and creative technology, really everything you need to be successful. What you need is want to be a person that can grow a big, huge business, helping people create this amazing thing in their backyard. If all this sounds like it might be a great fit for you, our team at Fran Coach is here to help you find the perfect fit. Perhaps it's Architect, let's chat, and we can help you create your better tomorrow. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break from our podcast to tell you about our amazing friends at Entrepreneur. If you're looking to become a franchisee or simply learn more about business ownership, and guys, let's be honest, you're listening to the Franchising 101 podcast, so we know you have some interest in this. And I really encourage you to go to entrepreneur.com to check out all of their great content and resources. Seriously, Entrepreneur has everything, all the way from a bookstore to the best podcasts, webinars, and videos, plus information on upcoming events and the latest articles that seriously, they cover all aspects of franchising and business ownership. If you're having trouble 
deciding which franchise is right for you, start with Entrepreneur's renowned Franchise 500 ranking, which highlights the best franchises of 2022. For 45 years and counting now, Entrepreneur has been and continues to be the most widely recognized and respected authority in the franchise market. Digital and print subscriptions are available so you never miss out on anything. So seriously, what are you waiting for? Go to entrepreneur.com right now and learn more. You talk about the 75% of Fran Fund being, being women. I think the other thing that's really... I pay a lot of attention to is the tenure of people in an organization, right? And I've been doing this almost 10 years now. And uh, the probably the, th- the three people I know, know, know the best, they've been there longer than me, right? Yeah. So like that speaks volumes of, because people, people don't leave jobs, they leave bosses, right? And so they're, they're in a, an amazing organization, um, from from that from that, and I know not, not just those three, but there's there's an incredible tenure within within Fran Fund because of the the culture and the organization you guys have built. We um, have always sort of treated the team when when there was four people, six people, ten people, twenty people. Um, we are a family, all with the same goal in mind. But you know, personal goals, financial goals, lifestyle goals just like any other business owner, but making sure that you have your team around you that are all on the same page. Uh, Friend Fund just sort of self-evolved as a company that works hard and plays hard. Therefore, if somebody comes in the company and their peer group uh, um, think they're not working as hard as they should, they either self-select (laughs) <laughs> that this may not be the place for me, right. or we help them select that option. But um, really, uh, that's you know, sort of we keep the team with everybody working hard. And then when we play hard, I mean, we have, uh, you know, simple birthday celebrations every month. But then we have when the sales, when the funding consultants, the sales team, more or less, although we don't really sell, but when they're all in town, um, they sort of suck the air out of the room. So we always make sure to have the entire <laughs> company together because, you know, none of them are actually in the office here. And we have great Christmas parties. We'll have a summer pool party at uh, Casa Sieber. And <laughs> anyway, we just we have good relationships and you have to have that um, to make your company successful. The other thing yes. I'm really I'm very proud of is that the funding consultants support each other they don't compete with each other they are you know believe that a rising tide raises all boats and so that makes things that makes sure that you for example if you send a referral and your favorite funding consultant's not in town there is no gap something's happening something's being taken care of yeah they're all they're all my favorites sherry um (laughs) so um you mentioned kind of throughout your career and having times where you were you were the only, you were the only woman in in the room, right? And just like hey, that was the thing. Um, somewhere along the, the the line, I'm guessing there has been another. You, you talk about mentoring others. Who was maybe a, a mentor for you that you re, that you remember that really kind of helped you out? My mentor was a male. <laughs> uh, back in the you know manufacturing world and. You know, there's just a few behavior, you know, I, I th- first of all, uh, you know, I'm a, of an age. I, I think that's pretty obvious, but um, things have changed over the years in terms of how, what opportunities women have and where they can go and what they can do. And so I, I sort of feel like I was one of the pioneers of showing that it can be done and Um, I had this this particular guy, um, short story, it was when I was at Motorola, we had, it was when I was in supply chain before I, you know, ended up being a pretty high level, but back when I was a buyer, um, purchasing manager or whatever, we had a part shortage for, from the company Seiko, which obviously (laughs) they make watches, but they also make crystal oscillators. And it was shutting, you know, it would shut down the entire factory. And so wasn't 
thank God it wasn't the buyer's fault. It was the factory in Japan because the Japanese, we say we need to increase capacity and they would nod their head up and down. Yes. But all they meant was, yes, I hear you. It doesn't mean, yes, I'm going to do anything. <laughs> um, but I had to start going to the, uh, you know, the highest level guy and explaining what was happening. And so being the, I love data, being the numbers person that I am, you know, I had this whole thing laid out and Excel spreadsheets and all this, when's it coming, blah, blah, blah. And the, my mentor said, Sherry, when you're going to that level, you start out with answering the question with um, three to five words. If there's no more questions, you're done. Right. If there's a second question, then you may say 10 words, 10 to 15 words. Usually that'll do it. If there happens to be a third question, then you can whip out all your stuff. <laughs> But it never gets there, <laughs> yes. you know. And so, yeah. I mean, that's that's just some good advice. You can apply that in so many ways. Don't answer a question that hasn't been asked. <laughs> yes, yes, um, yeah. I, I've joked about that um, in trainings over the years. There was a, a TV show that I watched way too many times called The West Wing, and <laughs> there was a scene in there. But it was like the the question was, "Do you know what time it is?" And the person is like, you know, like doing what pretty much everybody I've ever asked that question to. Yeah, it's, you know, 1230. That's not what I asked. I said, do you know what time it is? Yes. Yes. Um, and but it, but it, it, it's hard, right? When you're when you're in that position, you, you have all this information, you want to sh share everything or over tell when all I really like, I didn't need the history of time. I needed to know, do you know what time it is? Yes. So I, I, I love that. I, I'll share with you that um, we have, well, so I, I wanted a coach for the team on communication because the majority of our communication is over the phone with, with candidates. We meet our referral sources in person all the time, right? but our candidates, we, you know, they're all over the country and so are we. So we talk to them over the phone. So I wanted to hire a coach for that. And I've, was recommended a lady who happens to be a doctor of emotional intelligence. And of course, communication styles fall right under that. Now that was about six or so years ago. We have her at sales meetings at least twice a year. Um, and, you know, I can modify what's causing issues at that particular time. And, you know, she can shift and give us words of advice to use during that. And one of the profound things she told us was that people hear three out of the seven words you say the first time you say them. The second time they hear five out of the seven. And really, unless you give them a visual, that's about as far as it ever goes. <laughs> so yeah. with that in mind, you have to think about how do you talk to your candidates? How do you make sure they get the information they need? How do you make sure everybody's on the same page? And so that's the kind of things we try and get into and make sure that we're satisfying everybody's questions. Yeah. And and one person is going to hear three words, the other person is going to hear a different three words out, right. out of the out of those seven, right? So um no, very true. I I I, I love that. Um I I got I I'm going to preface the next two questions I have for you and then I'll probably have one more and I'll let you go. But um as I was preparing for having amazing female leaders in franchising on this month, I ask an amazing female leader that I might possibly be married to um, as well. I'm like, what, what, what do I ask? So the next two questions, if they suck, they came from her. If they're great, I'm editing this part out and it all came from me. That's okay? hilarious. Okay, so, go for it. Um, Sherry, what's your superpower? Understanding people intuitively. Ooh, and you said that so direct that it makes me you're just psychoanalyzing me right now is my what's my perhaps <laughs> body language saying am i leaning am i looking the right way no okay. i mean i i uh i feel like i do a pretty good job of reading people and that's not easy that's also an emotional intelligence skill right because um i do know when to pause when i'm talking to somebody and i do know when they're not listening and <laughs> I do know when the whole entire topic is wrong. So, right. you know, that's kind of a superpower, I think. I like it. Um, and 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 not one very many people have. Um, so um, the next one is, if you could tell your the younger version of Sherry 
something. Um, maybe you wish you would have learned or do this, don't do that. What would be that thing you would, current Sherry would tell younger Sherry? Be bolder, faster. Don't take no for an answer. Don't put yourself in a box that you are making your own box. Like, you know, <laughs> you can do, like, why can't you go from this level to this level? Why, you know, you, you don't have to go up. You can't, you don't have to touch every step to get to the top. Um, so yeah, I'd say be more aware of what's out there and go for it and make sure everybody knows you're going for it. Which it sounds, I love that, but it also like kind of sounds ironic because you look at, you even talked with your history, you were the only, you were kind of a pioneer with that. So you kind of already did that, but even think you could have done, done it, done it more or done it sooner. Um, I'm sort of embarrassed to say that in my first few years of Motorola, because I did not have a um, role model uh, in my own personal life and family of what being in a corporation was like and what growth was. I just thought you did your job and, you know, that's what you do. And then as I started to get promoted, um, I well, first of all, I when I was, you know, again, I was in procurement for a while and I three of my promotions, um, some of the suppliers told me that I was going to get before I knew or before my boss knew. So in other words, they were observing behaviors in me that meant right. I should be promoted, but I was clueless and not realizing that that was happening. So, um you know, it took me till around 30 or so to realize that, hey, you can control this. <laughs> yeah. You can be in charge instead of just, you know, I thought, you know, put your head down and do your work and you'll be recognized, which is true. But in this day and age, I think sometimes you have to brag about your accomplishments and it's not bragging if they're true. <laughs> right. Or you have to let people know that you want more. Right. Yeah. It, we, we, we all and it's OK to not. But. We, we've all seen people or, or I'm sure for Fran Fun and we have them, there's people that are in a role that they're super valuable, right? Well, they, they do, they put their head down, they do a good job. Um, if they're happy there, that's great. Not everybody wants to advance. So being able to be not just vocal on, oh my gosh, look how amazing I am, but being able to go to whoever's ahead of you to say, how do I get there? Yes. Help me. And again, like you said, you didn't have that mentor to 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 get you there. Did you figure that out on your own or did at some point somebody kind of pull you aside? Um, well, I started sort of self, you know, self-realizing after, you know, I was getting promoted. And then the mentor I mentioned, really, I didn't start working with him until, I mean, Motorola has grades. So right. I, you know, move up about four or five grades before um, I started working with Pete very frequently and, um you know, so I, I did learn some things there about what what the upper level looks like and that you need to be managing up as right. much as managing down. Yes. And so and the other thing about um, just to make a and you did make this point, but I think it could be even further made wanting to be ahead in actually having the skills to get ahead are sometimes two different things. Right. So. Don't mistake uh, just thinking you're going to morph yourself into the next level without doing the work it takes to get there right. and having the um, gravitas to go and ask somebody, what am I missing between this level and the next level? And yeah. and then heeding the advice. Yeah, it's the and then and again, well, it's like it's, I remember this in the corporate years of having to do performance evaluations on on our team. And, you know, there's the exceeds, there's the meets or whatever, right? All the silly stuff that, that, that you do. And, but being able to explain to people, like you're putting, you're, you're saying yourself exceeded, but you did your job that, that didn't right. exceed that you did your job. That's, that's meets that that's good. But that's like, that's, that's like me going through college and saying, I want to be like, I should be valedictorian. Like, no, dude, you got C's. Like, like it got me, it got me the degree, right? But and and that and that's a and that's okay. But you like you can't just do the example. job. You got to do more to get to 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 that next level, right? Excellent so, example. Um, super cool. So last last thing I will th throw at you, Sherry, and just I'll let you go because I know how busy you are. But um, just franchising in general. So somebody listening to this, um, 
thinking about possibly is franchising right for me? Um, you've been in this industry and on all sides for a long time. What would be a piece of advice you would tell somebody trying to figure out if this is maybe for them? If you are someone who has dreamed of owning your own business and have not figured out exactly what step one to that is, um, franchising is just such a beautiful thing because you are in, you know, there's the cliche, I didn't make it up, but it's it's a tenement of franchising is that you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. You buy a franchise because I like to describe it as the recipe for the french fries. You're right. buying in the brand, whatever brand you're interested in, the recipe for the french fries. What the brand owes you is you follow those that recipe to a letter and you will be successful. What you owe the brand is to follow that recipe <laughs> to the letter and you will be successful. And if, you know, uh, you don't follow the recipe, there's consequences for that. But you are in business. You have other franchisees that you can go to for advice. You have your franchisor support team. Um, the economy of the United States uh, depends on franchising for an incredible number of jobs. Right. Um, there are 800 and some thousand franchise establishments in the country. If you just conservatively said they each had 10 employees, you can just you know quickly get to giant numbers of impact to the U.S. economy. Um, it's a wonderful industry. And when you um, are buying that franchise, you're getting marketing. You don't have to go invent your own. You don't you don't have to decide where to advertise. You don't have to decide. You know, there's so all the things. If you do your diligence and you get a franchise that meets your lifestyle goals, your financial goals, your you know time goals, all of those things, that's winning. Yeah. Yep. Um, super cool. And and when you're ready for that and you need funding, um, do we know where they should go, Sherry? I think a good idea would be Fran Fund because we we are uh, <laughs> we are interested in we love seeing people's successes, and that's one of the benefits we have of also having the third party administration in house at Fran Fund. We do get to see people living out the life of their franchise agreement, and we get to see the ones cashing out um, and going off into happy happy retirement land with Uncle Sam having contributed to their business success and. Yeah. We, we see just fun success stories and more and more women. Love it. Which is awesome. Which, 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 which a great way to end this. So let's, let's, let's find some more. Let's get them to Fran Fun and help them be happy. So um, always an absolute pleasure to to speak with you. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story and your time with us today. Thanks, Tim. Love working with you and your Thanks. team. Thank you so much. And as always, thank you to our loyal uh, Franchising 101 podcast listeners for, for tuning in. Um, if you are ready, if you've heard enough, you're ready to learn a little bit more to see if this might be your path, please reach out to us. Um, you can find us social media all over the place, uh, but online, francoach.net. And by the way, completely redesigned. So that's super fun. Um, in fact, play a game. Go to francoach.net. See if you can find a typo on the new, new spot. Send me a message, okay? Um, and franchising101podcast.net. Again, always .net for us. Never, ever any fee for our service. We're here to educate you if this is the right path and then help you find your best fit if it is. So reach out. We're excited to work with you and we can help you create your better tomorrow. Thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll talk with you next week.